Hello, my name is Kenny Sultan, and welcome to Acoustic Blues Guitar. This is the video that accompanies my two books on Center Stream Publications, Introduction to Acoustic Blues and Acoustic Blues Guitar. Now, while you don't need the books to understand this video, they complement one another, so it's always better to have as many tools as possible to understand my methods. We'll be covering key blues in three keys today. The key of E, using a monotone bass, where we just hit one bass string. Then we'll be playing blues in the key of G, where we'll be using an alternating bass. Going between two strings for our rhythm. And finally, we'll be playing slide guitar in an open tuning. So, hopefully we'll have a good time while we do it and try to stay loose. Our first song we're going to go over is Gambler's Blues. And it's in, it's in book one, which is uh, Introduction to Acoustic Blues, which I'll call book one from now on, just because it's easier. And it's on page 11. So I'll play it once through, Gambler's Blues. Check out the hands. Gambler's Blues. Okay, let's take a look at it right now. The first thing we're doing is we're doing a little triplet slide. And we're sliding from the third fret to the fifth fret on the second string. And I call this a quick slide because it really doesn't take any time measure. It's not like you're going. It's just a quick grace slide. It sounds a lot bluesier than this. It just sounds like you're tuning your guitar if you're doing this right here. Easy. Okay, so slide into it. They can slide from your fourth fret if you want. Second fret. I just kind of go from the third because it's easy. And usually I let the fret stop me on my slides. I slide right into the fret, right like that. I don't try for the middle because usually you end up short. So right against the fret. So it's a quick slide. You hit your second string, first string, and then second string. So you pinch, and then one, two. Okay, try to make it sound as bluesy as possible because the lick itself is pretty easy. You're just hitting the same E note. A lot of E's. <laughs> then from there, I slide up into the seven, eight position, I call it. It's like an E minor. I use my second finger here so I can slide right up to the eighth fret drop my first finger down, and now I have this like partial E minor chord. Now here, when I get here, again, I try to make this sound a little bit more bluesy by bending the strings somewhat. Now notice I'm bending the second string a little bit more than the first there, because I'm trying to bend it into the E major here. Not quite that far, but... Now, I'm not bending both of them up. If you listen, if I bend both, it, it doesn't sound real good. Now, okay, so just bend the second string pretty hard. And let the first go with it a little bit. OK, 
Okay, again. Now notice when I'm bending the strings, I also bring it back down after each bend. I don't hold it up like this. There's no really use bending it then. You're just hitting the same note over and over. So what I do is I bend once, bring it back down, bend again. It's really one of the harder parts of playing blues guitar is getting a proper feel for the bend. You got to try to play it with a little bit of emotion. If you had them in a bad day or something, then you'd usually play the bends a little better. So, so far we have this. That's E right there. Notice the bass is always on the beat. Never leaves. You can mess up the treble and you'll still sound okay as long as your bass is on the beat. But if you start going, you're hurting, okay? So just always right on the beat. One, two, three, and four, okay? And just do the triplet right up there. Okay, from there we're gonna go to the A chord. And what we do then is we switch down to the fifth string, the A note, and we're just gonna go right on the beat on the A string. Pretty simple, okay? And we're coming off this A7th chord, okay? I call this the blues A7th. Sort of bluesy sounding. As opposed to what I call the Peter, Paul, and Mary A7th. Folky. Doesn't work big time with blues. So we're gonna use this one right here. It's partial bar and the seventh. This time we're gonna go from the A seventh to the A sixth then to like either this A seventh, which I said, you know, was folky, or a partial A seventh. Okay, so we're gonna go like so. Treble only at first here. Again, using a triplet, going first string, second string, first string. Lift off. And twice there. Okay, now if we use our bass, we're going to, again, pinch the bass with the first of the triplet. Again. Now the only problem with this chord is that sometimes your second string is going to sound pretty weak. If you listen, it's, you might sound like this to begin with. So this bar is pretty tricky. I try to pull down a little bit, get it close to the fret, so you get that second string to sound clear. And I try to accent the first part of the triplet too, like this. right on the beat. Okay. Now there's other variations you can do off of this chord and we'll get into that a little bit later, but this is basically, you use this chord a lot right here, coming up. Right like that, a very common chord. Okay, our uh, next position we're gonna use is, it's gonna be, this is the way I look at it. It's like you make a D seventh chord and then slide it up two frets. Okay, slide it up two frets, and then lift your ring finger off. Okay, so D seventh up two frets, ring finger off. Lightning Hopkins chord. Okay, it's like a. Now, if you put your third finger down, you'd have another way of making an E seventh. It's a little lighter sounding, but for this particular song, we want to leave our ring finger off, open first string. This is another quick slide, okay? And this one's a little more difficult because we're going to be trying to be hitting three strings at once. So it's a quick slide from right here. And you don't have to slide. If you didn't slide, it would sound like this. But again, listen to the difference.
Now when I do slide up, when I go back down, I release the pressure a little bit, okay? Because if you're going back down... So as I slide in, a lot of pressure, and then I just relax my hand a little bit and go back down. And that way you don't hear the slide going down, which never really sounds very good. Okay, also on my right hand here right now, the right hand technique I'm going to show you. This is called the brush technique. I use this a lot because there's two ways to play this little lick here. You could take three fingers and go. But that's, not, again, not real bluesy sounding. But if you want to do it that way, that's okay. I have some students who do it that way, classically trained people. But what I do is I take one finger and just brush up like I'm strumming up on the guitar. Or you can take two. And it doesn't matter how many strings they hit. You could hit two strings, three. You know, even if you hit your fourth. It's bluesy. It's the blues. See, just get loose with that. And then I, what I do from there is I just go back down. Back down to the left hand. It's just... So it just goes... Slide down. Okay, now, the next part is if you look in the book or if you don't have the book, either way, it just calls for a... But I always make the chord. The trick is to always make the chord if you can. Because the way it's written, it's just open strings. So it sounds like... Okay. But if you make the chord and you hit more, than the, more strings than you're supposed to hit... sounds okay again but if you don't have the chord down so always make that chord in that position there and that way you can mess around a little bit with it and go same with the B7 the next chord really it just calls for this in the treble and your fifth string bass second fret the B note so you could actually do it like you know But again, if you don't hit the strings that you're supposed to hit. Okay, so I always make the B7. And that way, if you hit some more strings, people will think you know what you're doing, okay? Okay, so that last three bars goes like this. the cake, okay? Then we go into a little bit of an A bass run. Again. The only thing I recommend, this isn't that difficult, the thing I recommend here is that you come in with your second finger right here. It puts you into position for the rest of the notes. If you come in with your first finger, which most people like to start licks with their first finger, uh, I don't know why, but if you start it like this, then you're out of position, okay? It's like a chess game, the way I think of it. So I usually think things out before I just start hacking, okay? So, notice how that fits real good right there. Then you can, you can either use your pinky there, or I just slide up. And then the turnaround. Again. Now finally on that last part, the C7, the B7 turnaround. I guess you should make it like this, I don't know. Too much movement, okay? I'm too lazy. Most blues people I know are way too lazy to do that. So what I do is I just take a C7 chord, move it up one fret, and you don't even need your pinky, really, because you're only trying to hit these bass strings. 
just like that. Okay, so one more time, all the way through. I'll play it a little bit more up to speed right now and check all everything out. Our next song is Delta Blues, and that's in book one, page 13. Uh, you noticed I, I changed my shirt. This, us rock and blues guys gotta change our outfits every song, so you know. No, actually the boss told me to change it. Too much glare. You know these uh, Hollywood types, right? Yeah? Anyway, Delta Blues. Okay, I'll play it through once and we'll talk about it. Starts off with that, like in the last song, that D seventh chord moved up two frets, but this time we're going to leave the ring finger down. Okay. Now I'm going to go over something real quick. This is the way I play guitar, and it's like Kenny's easy way to music theory. Okay. Really, this is all you need to know to get by for blues playing. I move all my chords or notes up two frets every time I go up in the alphabet. In other words, if I go from A to B, or like F to G. All the way up, I'm going to move everything up two frets, okay? D7, two frets to E7, okay? Except between E and F and B and C. Then it's only one fret. It's like on the piano. If you look, there's black keys and white keys. E and F, there's no black key between them. B and C, there's no black key between them. So between, let's say, D, E, F, between E and F, one fret. Okay, but otherwise it's two, except between the B and C. D, D7, here we'll go up the neck with this. D7, E7, F7, G7, A7, B7, and then B to C, remember, C7. So by just learning this one chord, you now have 12 chords. And if you add the flats and sharps, which, you know, I don't most of the time with any, you know, you're looking real good. All the way up. Okay, so D7 up two frets, and every chord works this way. We'll be going over each chord and uh, when we go to each specific, specific song. Okay, D7, E7. Just slide in. I use the quick slide, even though in the book it's not notated. I'll slide in. And if you notice on my right hand, I'm also using the brush technique again. Pinching. Okay, let's take a look at the left hand real quick again and watch that walk down. This sounds complicated. I love telling people this because you sound like a real musician, but in reality, you're just walking a chord down the neck. Take this D seventh up two, and we play it here for a while. Then we move down to the E flat seventh. Okay, we're getting technical now. 
Okay, then we go back up to the E7, then we drop to E flat 7th, D 7th, and then the E chord. Okay, now I make the full E here in bar 4. I go. Okay, in reality, you could go. Or something like that. But again, as in the first song, if you don't fret the whole chord and you miss some strings, it's not going to sound very good. So try to make the whole chord here. This is a very common E position right here. E to E6 to E7. You can go in any order there. You go. You can make a whole song up. You can go all over with that pinky. So make the E, and you can try working it around here. Maybe second fret here, and go down to your first string. You know, it's a blues. It's pretty easy. Okay, so we're coming along now to the A chord. Okay? The A chord. When we get to the A, we're going to play the A open this time. Okay? Because there's just too much going on to try to make the A seventh here or any one of these. I, I play it open. So I move to my A string. And I go. self-explanatory. Just be careful that the bass, again, stays on the beat. It doesn't follow the treble. The tendency would be to want to go. That's the easiest thing is to always pinch them together. So make sure you're going one, two, three, four, again, and just running off the treble notes here. And if you don't want to do them in that exact order, I mean, you go. Any of those, it's going to sound good at any time, so you can play them in any order you want. You don't have to play them exactly that way. One recommendation I would have is that maybe bend that third fret first string a little bit. That, that helps, because otherwise it's not that interesting of a lick, you know. And I wrote it, I'm telling you this, but anyway, it's really not that interesting. So if you bend that third fret, sounds a little better. One thing about bending off the, especially the first string, okay, if you're going to be bending here and you attack it right on top of the fret, uh, string wire like this and you try to bend, what's probably going to happen is, or at best, you know, maybe a little bit before it kicks off. So what I try to do is come a little bit underneath the string here, like sideways, so you get a little leverage. And sometimes I add, or most of the time, I add another finger behind it. You can add all three fingers. Look how much leverage you get in pressure. Three fingers, two fingers, one finger, not as much. And then if you go regular, like a regular fret, so come underneath it and pull it up. Then back to. Straight ahead, that same E seventh we've been working with, real common chord. Okay, now the B seventh, again, just a loose, brushy feel. Stand on your fifth string, two, three, four, and just one and two. have you keep that loose than to try just to p pick the specific strings like something like that just play loose keep the bass straight though then we're going to go into an A lick here okay now that, that's fairly complicated this lick right here so let's take a look at it a little closer it starts off the same way 
as we did before, very similar. Three, O, oh, two, O. Oh. Then I go four, three, four. Just like that D seventh up again, coming off of that position for the A. We kind of did that in the last song, but we're doing it for A now, because we have our A bass. This is also can be an E lick. If you use your sixth string right here, the only difference would be this. In the A lick, we're going three, or G, E, D flat, okay? Uh, in E, I'd go to my third fret. Again, very cool leg. We'll be getting to that lick, I'm sure, later, okay? But right now it's A. Put a little slide in there sometimes. Quick slide. And the turnaround is just similar to what we did earlier in the song. Make your full E here, and then cheating C7 to B7. Okay, so we'll play the Delta Blues one more time here. We're now going to play blues in G, and we're going to use an alternating bass. Okay, so we're going to alternate between the 6th and 4th string instead of monotone bass when we play blues in E. Monotone bass, alternating bass. It's a little bit more difficult. And this is uh, the blues break in G. It's page 26 of book 1. Page 26 of book 1. It goes like this. That's a blues break in G. Notice the first time through, uh, I, I played a couple blues notes, that's for sure. Mistakes are okay as long as you keep the rhythm all right. You notice there. Okay, first of all, I recommend on the left hand here, possibly making a new G chord, okay? If you're making it this way, you're gonna find it very difficult to switch to the G seventh in time. Really difficult. So I'd make the G this way, and this might be new for you, or you might have already been making it like this, but that way you can get to the G7 real quick, and also it's easier to get to the C chord. As opposed to... So, uh, new G. It's a little harder on your pinky over here, because it has to do a lot of extra work, so we'll try to give you some exercises for that, or the song itself might be uh, exercise enough. Okay, so we start off like this. Alternating between the sixth and fourth string. Mostly pinches. So you pinch on one, two, and three. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Switch to the C chord, 5-4 bass now, 5-4 bass, and now we're going to go again, a little 
little bit more difficult. We have a filler note in there, and that's uh, this second string right here. that really isn't part of the melody, but it adds some syncopation. Then we go back to our G. And again, major pinky workout here. It goes... always to pinch the strings together, okay? Always pinching the strings together. That's the natural tendency here is to go Every one of my students does that for a while and you lose your rhythm real quickly that way. So try to keep it one, two, three, four. Okay, now for the D chord, we're going up a little bit. We're going to move up the neck to this position here. 7th fret, 5th fret. Now, this is coming off this D chord position. A. Remember how we talked how chords moved up the neck before? Okay. A. B. C. One fret between B and C. And now D. But we're just going to cheat and just make a partial D here. For these are the only notes we need. Sometimes when you play in alternating bass modes, you can kind of cheat a little bit, and I just kind of use the two strings here. Again. Pretty easy. You could add that extra note if you want to, in case you miss a string. But as I said earlier, in blues, I play real loose in a straight monotone blues style. very loose, but when I'm finger picking, it's a little tighter, I'm much more accurate. I'm not just going Everything's a lot cleaner, so sometimes you don't need to make the entire chord. Then we go to C, and add that pinky again, your pinky's gonna be hurting. Add that pinky. In fact, it might, you know, you might want to take it easy for a while because you'll be using it more than you probably ever have on this song here. So if it starts to hurt, just lay off of it for a while. But again. And back to G. So here it is, the blues break. Just a 12 bar blues in G. We're now going to move into book two, which is a little bit more complex, but hopefully you'll be able to do okay. This one's called A Fine Philly. It's on page 28. extra added blues notes. We'll go over it slowly now, though. 
Uh, as compared to the blues break, break in G, the pinky's moving even faster now, if you notice. <laughs> up to speed. Okay, the nice thing about this, this pinky movement here, the third fret, anything on the third fret in the first three strings, or open, is going to sound good. So you don't, you know, you want to try to stick to the song, but you don't have to go in any specific order. You can go... Okay, this is on beat three here. You don't have to do that, okay? It's quite difficult to move that third finger and still keep the, the rhythm going in the tre treble proper. If you listen, it adds a lot, though. If you want it, you can just stay normal, five, four, like that, and go. You can try the double alternating bass. Coming off that C seventh chord. All right. Then we go back to G. Basic G lick. So far, nothing too complicated there. Then we take a C seventh chord and move it up two frets to D seventh. Now remember earlier how we moved that D7th chord up two frets to E7th. Well, the same thing goes on. You can move any chord up the neck this way. C7th to D7th. Up the neck some more. To E7th. Two frets, remember. To F7th. E and F, one fret, remember. To G7th. to A7. So there they all are. Now you can make a lot of different chords with this one form. In fact, you can play a whole song just with this chord. C7. F7. What's the blues? C7. valuable chord to be able to move around. We're going to move it up to the D7, up two frets, and go. Again, a double alternating bass. You don't have to do that. You can go. C7. Same thing. You don't have to alternate. Turn around. G. That's a little boogie. Where now the movement is in the bass. The treble stays the same. But the bass is going to go. And notice how I move my third finger out of there when after I hit the initial G chord. I don't keep it down. It makes it too difficult to get all the notes cleanly. I just hit it, then move it out. And then I go into a thumb wrap D7. Okay, and by wrapping my thumb over the top of the neck, I never really try to wrap it over first and make a real nice fret job there and then 
put my fingers in and displace my fingers. That's not the point. The point is to make the cord feel comfortable with it. And then just sort of sneak your thumb over, get a little bit of the fleshy part of your thumb, whatever. Sneak it over the top. If it sounds, that's okay. It really doesn't matter. But you don't want to come all the way over and then have your chord sound terrible. So you wrap your thumb over, you know, put your fingers down, bring your thumb over just a little bit. Hopefully get a clean sound. If that's impossible for you to do, or you have a nylon string guitar, your hands are small, for whatever reason, you can also do it this way. That's sort of another way to make a, G, a D seventh over here. Okay, so here's a, a fine filly one more time. Our next song is going to continue where the last one just left off with a boogie. It's called Boogie Blues 2. It's in book 2 on page 30. It goes like this. Notice again that the bass is doing the movement here. We're just pinching together with the first string, then hitting our second string, then pinching, then second, then second. That was actually a seventh. That was the one I was doing before. Here's what I was doing before. So the bass is going like this, typical boogie. It's pretty easy on its own, just grooving, well, <laughs> as soon as I say something. Then we're going to pinch our first string with it. Now we're going to add our second string in between, so it sounds like this. Now notice when I add the second string, it isn't exactly even. In other words, I'm not making the total beat like, like this. That is a real think of it or blues -y. It's more, it's closer together than notes. Listen, more syncopated. Okay, now we move to the C chord, same thing. Okay, we're going to hit our first string, pinch our first string with our fifth. Okay, so the boogie goes like this. No sweat. And we're going to pinch with the first. second string in there. And back to G. Then we move up to a C7th, up two frets, to our D7th again, remember that? Been around a lot. 
Back down to C. Again. Five, four, bass. And then into the G and a turnaround. Watch this walk down over here, okay, with the left hand. We're going to start off here. Then we're going to move our third finger down to the fourth string, third fret. Second fret. First fret. And then into a D7. Again. Now you can move that anywhere, okay, here's a little trick. This is G right now, but using the same theory that we used before, but being able to move it anywhere on a guitar neck, Kenny's easy music theory lesson, remember, for those of you who have never taken music classes. We're going to take this G, and if we bump it up a couple to A, well now we have a turnaround in A. Okay, or we go to B, C. So it goes anywhere on the guitar neck, but we're just going in G right now. Boogie blues. Try to make it swing a little bit. Notice this shiny thing. I hope it's not blinding your eyes here. This is a National Resophonic guitar. One of the new ones that are made here. Exact replicas of the old Nationals from the 1930s. Great instrument for playing slide. And you notice I have a slide right here. And I'm going to try to show you a little bit about slide guitar. So first we need to get in tune. I'm in standard tuning right now. Even though you can play slide in standard tuning, and we, we did a couple songs in the books in standard. We're going to do it in open D right now, so let's tune up. We're going to tune to a D chord. So we're going to drop our sixth string down to a D, down two frets. So you match it to your fourth string. Or if you want to, you can fret it on the seventh fret and match it to your open fifth string. I usually just match it to my fourth. If you have a good ear, you're able to do that. Then these next two strings stay the same, A and D. Then the third string, we move down to an F sharp. So you fret on the fourth fret here on the, on the fourth string. And lower it down. Then you can do it by ear. Or fourth fret, fourth string to the open third. Remember, always tune down. That way you won't get in any trouble. The second string, we're going to go down to an A, so we can match it with our fifth string. Or third fret, third string. D, A, D, F sharp, A. And the first string we're going to put into, down to a D note. Match to your fourth string again. D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. If you have a chromatic tuner, just that's the easiest way. Just go with that. D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. The slide. Some things I want to talk to you a little bit about the slide, first of all. I use a metal slide. I just like the sound of a metal slide better. Some people prefer glass. Metal is a little bit of a harsher tone, I think. And I also use a long slide. Notice that if I put the slide, whoop, if I put the slide down on all the strings, it covers them all because a lot of times I'll finger pick. So there are some slides on the market that are very short pinky slides, and those are great for playing lead. 
But the problem is if you want to fret all the strings and do some picking, it's impossible to do. So I use a long metal slide, but it's really a matter of preference for you. The pressure on the strings with the slide, that's really important. You don't want to push down too hard, because then you start to hear this. That's not good. Or too light, because you're going to hear this. A lot of rattling. So what you want to do is just push down hard enough, I'd say about halfway to the fingerboard. Notice that? It's like a violin. There's no frets anymore. If you can hear the frets change, the notes change, you're pushing down too hard. So you should be able to get a nice, clean sound. I'd start down low. Practice bringing it all the way up to the 12th fret until you get a clean sound. Then maybe a couple strings. Okay, one other thing you have to do also is line up with the fret. If I say, for instance, 12th fret, and I want you to play the 12th fret, you wouldn't put the slide where you normally would put your finger, which is in the middle of the fret, 12th fret right here. You want to put the slide right over the fret wire. Because if you put it in the middle, remember there's, we're playing like a violin, there's no frets anymore. Same as you go down, if I say 7th fret, not in the middle, right over the fret wire. A good way to test this, your intonation, is to possibly just fret down on the 12th fret here, strike it, and then bring the slide up to get that same tone. Notice that little movement I'm doing there? It's called a tremolo. Now, it's a pretty cool sound, but one of the reasons I also use it is that, you know, you can get a little sloppy because if you had to just stay right over the wire, I mean, you move it all, and it's going to sound. So what I do, I just move a lot. And that way, there's no problem. They think, you know, people think you know what you're doing. And you can get within like a quarter inch or a half inch and just start shaking it. Now, the tremolo is fairly difficult. I call it sort of, it's a relaxed movement, but it's very controlled. In other words, you want your hand to be relaxed. You don't want it stiff. You're not going to get a proper tremolo. You want your hand to be relaxed, but you want to be able to control it. And one way is to maybe start out wide and then bring it in. One of the other tricks is that when you use the tremolo and you're sliding into a note, wait till you get to that note before you add the tremolo, okay? Don't use the tremolo on the way up and <laughs> on the way up, okay? It sounds like some other country. Here we go. Then kick in the tremolo. Notice how I slide into notes a lot, I and mean, we call it slide guitar. If you just played the note like... There's no point in that, so I slide into the note slot. and then add the tremolo right there. Okay, if you feel you got a little bit of a handle on the slide, then you can try to, one other technique is a damp technique. And what, what I do there is I drag one of the fingers, or all the fingers, but I drag my first finger behind the slide. Okay, and that kills out the overtones. If you listen without any kind of damp behind it, So what I do is I place my first finger down, oh, about the pressure of a harmonic. Real light. Put your first finger down real light behind the slide. And it kills out the overtones. Again, without and with. Notice how my third finger is also on top of the slide a little bit here to kind of guide it. It's all one unit here. My slide's not out here, my fingers aren't out here. It gets crazy that way. It's all one unit. Because remember, originally it was played on your lap. And they played it that way. So you want to try to keep that same effect and move up like so. Okay, first song we're going to do is 
Dust My Broom, Elmore James, Robert Johnson, Ty Blake. Um, page 36 of book one or page 42 or three of book two. It's in both books. Anyway, goes like this. Mostly it's just a shuffle piece, okay? So you just shuffle along here. Move up to the fifth fret. Now, since we are in open tuning, you don't need to make your full bar chord because, well, it'd be impossible anyway with the slide. But you just have to go. Okay, so that's pretty easy. the slide part. What I have written down is just 12th fret. And again, it's kind of a brush technique. One more time. Now, if I just held it over the 12th fret like that, it really wouldn't sound that great. So I slide in. Okay, now again, when I slide in, I really don't want to hear the slide going back down. We talked about that earlier on the tape. Listen what happens then. Ooh, sounds like you have too much to drink, okay? But anyway, bring it up. And then what I do is I release the pressure lightly on the slide. Come back down, slow motion. Okay, and there's another way to do it too. I do it both ways. And the other way is to tremolo the whole way through. Don't even bother sliding, just tremolo the 12th fret like this. a lot harder than it looks because your hand's doing this over here and this hand's doing this over here and sometimes the tremolo doesn't want to keep consistent so that takes a lot of work so I'd recommend sliding it first then it's way down to the end All the way down there okay so boom boom and if you miss the note or whatever it's okay just try to keep the rhythm together again watch okay right into that shuffle now here's a little trick i'll tell you about shuffles and the earlier blues uh and the rhythms in the books and and, and in this shuffle right here a lot of times I leave a little bit early before that last shuffle note. In other words, a shuffle typically will go one and two and three and four and that last and after the four I bail out sometimes. Okay, check it out. Right there. Okay, because if you try to stay the whole way, a 
little bit too rushed. So feel free to bail out on that last one. Okay, here's one more time. Otherwise, it's pretty straight ahead. We do a shuffle up here on the seventh fret. That's for the A. Back down to the five. And then the turnaround. It just. Those last three sevens, just seventh fret, the five chord. Put a little tremolo or slide into it. So here it is again, dust my broom. We're going to continue on now with another song. You can just go right into it. It's called Clean My Room, Dust My Broom, Clean My Room. Get it? Well, it ain't that funny, but anyway. This is on page 44 of book two. Really the same exact song, just more complicated, and in some areas way more complicated, and you'll see. This time we're going to start out now on the 12th fret. Instead of starting with a shuffle, we're going to start on the 12th fret. So it's going to go like this. You should have. It's the same thing we did before. No problem on the first few bars. G seventh chord. We're going to be coming into new, a new G. Instead of doing the shuffle up here, we're going to be doing this. Well, I call it like a funny E. You should think of it that way. Okay. A lot of times I I try to trick my mind instead of playing a brand new chord, and I just think of it. Hey, it's like an E, but let's slip that third finger over here a little bit. Okay, just like that. So instead of making it real pretty, I'm trying to do a good job like so, I just kind of make an E and slop it up a little bit. Move it over. And it goes. Again. If you want it, you can actually create a shuffle out of this chord too by going. Take the slide and move up to the eighth fret. Again. And I use my thumb on my right hand. You notice over here on my right hand now, I'm using my thumb. To get down there. You can use your fingers, but you don't seem to have as much power. So I use my thumb there. So far, okay, one thing I forgot to talk about a little bit earlier was this like. 
That's just as loose as you can get, okay? It just comes off that third string. I'm sliding to that 12th fret. You don't want to hear it go back down again. So you want to hear it come up. I kind of wave at it is the way I look at it, just waving. And you don't have to hit the 12th exactly. One of the tricks about slide is try to avoid going past the fret. That's one of the main tricks because you can always end up a little short. But if you go past it, you're hurting. Check it out. So when in doubt, just bail out and run. Once you go past it, it's a point of no return. Weak. So. So then we're coming back out. We come out of this. Now here's the lick here. Third fret. Again. kind of difficult. The further you get down towards the, the, the end of the neck here, the harder it is to get a clean tone out of the slide. Your accent's a little lower, and, uh, and it's really hard to get the sounds that you can get up here. So, even a medium sound down here is okay. Don't, don't, don't stress out if it's not perfectly clean, because most of the time mine isn't either. So, Use a slide for that first fret there. That's just re really would be almost impossible. So, now to the A chord. We come back up to the 10th fret. This is a great lick. And now we're going to use our thumb again over here. And we're going to go again. Kind of a lead. And add a treble on the end. That takes the place of our five chord. And then I go. Whoop, I went past the fret. <laughs> That's all thumb action. More power. So here's that lick. Wave at it. Or if you want to make that turnaround a little bit more complex, you can go. there on the fifth string instead of we can go okay so let's put them both together here and play a little music and maybe I'll add a little bit and you can just check it out okay
slide guitar. Well, that's it, everybody. That's uh, the end of the tape, and I hope you don't hate me too much, or your loved ones don't hate me with you, all your practicing that I hope you're doing. Stay tuned for more stuff that we'll be having coming out in the future, a new book and possibly another video. Keep practicing, stay loose, have a good time. We'll see you next time.